Hello everyone and welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot. Today's reading we're going to do something that is a little bit more, um, I'm getting a lot of notes from people that are saying I feel so much of my person's energy, like just a ton of their energy feels like it's coming through. I can't seem to get away from it. What do I need to know about this? What do I need to be doing about this? And so that's kind of a, a culmination of all of the, the emails that I'm getting right now. And so I feel like that's what I'm going to go ahead and do this one about. But of course, as always, it will be a general reading for this collective. So um, if it won't, it won't, of course, resonate with everybody, but if it resonates with you, then by all means, um, take a look at some of the older videos because they're all going to be very much connected. And if you aren't already subscribed, um, think about subscribing. So what we're going to start out with is kind of just the general energy that's happening between the two of you. So what I would sometimes term that energetic backdrop and what's happening with you um, just kind of what's happening in your energy today. And so, um, some of you will notice that the video looks a little bit different. Might sound a little bit different, too. I'm in the process of changing my studio. It's actually in a different location now. So you might notice a couple of differences. Hopefully nothing too bad. Um, we've got an Eight of Swords out in the reverse right now. So this is something that has been, like this is a change in the energy. This represents a change. It feels like um, something that has been weighing one or both of you down no longer is from a decision-making standpoint. So um, we know that in this uh, at this time there are, at least for you, but we've also seen for your person too, a lot of decisions that kind of haven't been made that need to be made. And some of those can be a little challenging. Oop, what do we got? Let's see here. Uh, okay, I've got the sacred clown, which is like the pool, but in the reverse. Okay, so looking before you leap. This is not necessarily not leaping. Um, sometimes we see that in the reverse and it looks like not jumping into something, not taking the next um, available path. In this case, it looks like looking before you leap, being not necessarily hesitant, but aware of what's happening in the surroundings. So with the Eight of Swords, though, uh, there's definitely a feeling of having recently gotten out of a situation that kind of concerns them. It feels like it... Okay, so I feel a little bit for both of you, but it feels like it's not happening exactly the same way. Like maybe you just completed something that has been kind of hanging over your head for a while. Um, that's a little bit of the energy that I see where this Eight of Swords in the reverse comes through as it reflects your energy. And I feel like the way that it reflects their energy is more like something's really been weighing them down for a while and they have a realization that kind of makes that a little bit different. It also though, um, sometimes we see that uh, it's this, this clown, this sacred clown in the reverse, which is the same as the fool in the reverse, has a little bit of um, what I sometimes feel with the like the Queen of Wands in the reverse, where there or the Queen of um, Swords in the reverse, where there's not a need to move quickly, not a need to make rash decisions. You have an opportunity to think things through. That's kind of a little bit of what's behind this Sacred Clown energy. But with the Prince of Wands, that one is a lot more daring, a lot more willing to try something new. So I don't know exactly what, what will come of this energy being like things are bubbling to the surface. It feels like something's bubbling to the surface, but there's still this kind of look before you leap sort of thing going on. So I don't know that that's bad though. I feel like maybe they needed a little bit of the look before you leap vibe going on for them anyway. So having some of that there, um, won't hurt them and I feel like you already had a little bit of it but maybe um you maybe you it's situational so it depends on um what situation that you're jumping into this is remember you guys are both um this sounds off topic but I promise it's not you guys are both learning the lesson of the ten of cups which is the um the lesson of what do you do when you find that thing that seems like it's too good to be true? If you have that tendency to run headlong toward it without looking before you leap, 
this is the energy of balancing that out a little bit. So I feel like, that again, we've got these things that kind of don't necessarily manifest the same way for both of you. Um, we have the Five of Wands in reverse here. Um, to talk about kind of, it's a sense of going with the flow. There's a little bit of a feeling of going with the flow, but there's more, or it's, it's more by like it's a strategic intentional going with the flow going with the flow because you know it's the right thing to do like when you're trying to float relaxing that's the sort of thing that happens here it's relaxing because it's part of the solution and you know it's the right thing to do um we've got okay yeah we've got the hanged man which is that new perspective there's a new perspective and something that is already in motion but it's like there's this sense of inevitability there's a sense of there being something new that's in motion that is this is a very real thing and it's not a bad sense of something in motion I don't know I can't complain about this I don't think um this energy seems very positive it feels like good things are likely to happen in this energy I don't know that things happen quickly but um I don't know that things happening quickly is necessarily always beneficial anyway we do have the Princess of Wands. Princess of Wands is, it's um, it's willing to have a lot of fun. There's definitely the sense of wanting to have a lot of fun, maybe a little bit of um, almost wanting to put that out there, an exuberance, wanting to show off a spring-like exuberance. And it's like there's something that, it it's almost wanting people to see how happy you are together, that sort of thing, That, but it's one of you wanting to be able to show that I don't know I'm trying to figure out exactly what that means because I don't have an image jumping into my mind specifically I just keep having words that I'm supposed to say and when I hear them come out I'm not entirely sure what they mean so hopefully they're helpful to you um, we've got the knight of cups here in the reverse here so this is the thing that kind of may be able to there's something about this that makes them feel like they need to kind of they need to say something they need to communicate but they also feel a little bit like they need to keep quiet there's something here that keeps them a little bit quieter a little bit less um a little bit less daring because there's this is whatever it is that holds in the daring portion of them but uh, you know again that may require a little bit of balance and this is the sense of having some of that balance This is overall not a negative energy to be in. So let's see. I dropped one. It's the Queen of Wands, but it's in the upright. So there is still some desire to... This is an egoistic desire to move forward and to make something happen despite the fact that maybe it seems like it's not um, the right time for it. But by the same token, it's about why you're doing what you're doing or why they are doing what they're doing. And I feel like it's for the right reasons. Again, there is a lot of positivity in this energy, um, a lot of moving forward a sense of inevitability with the bond and it's like a quiet strength that starts to come in with this a uh, little bit of a quiet strength so let's get in now to let's try looking into what's kind of driving this energy because this is an energy that you guys are feeling like you're able to feel this person a lot that's what I'm keeping that's what I keep hearing I, I feel them a lot. I need to understand what to do going forward. So one of the things that we've looked at, the first thing we look at here is what's the environment that you guys are working in um, so that we have some idea of how to understand that it's context for the rest of the reading. Um, then looking into this energy of what's really happening with the relationship. What do you need to know about the shifts that are happening now? Because it's those shifts that are happening now that are kind of driving the need for you to make, um, to do something. There's a, there's a sense of discomfort and a need to do something. Let's see here. We've got the Prince of Cups. Prince of Cups is communicative, but um, that's not necessarily the strong point. So here we have the Knight of Cups. It's the same kind of energy. Um, but with the Prince of Cups, there's a little bit of a softness to it. So a little bit more of an approachability. This is a special time for this relationship. 
it's hitting a certain type of like it's hitting a certain vibe right now and it's all in the spiritual realm none of this is necessarily taking place in the the um in the physical realm you might be noticing it in your dreams if you are interacting with this person in like in daily life pay attention to what's happening in your dream something's been made right or is in the process of being made right the justice card is a card of balance and in this context it's about establishing balance we also have the five of wands in the reverse it's kind of a repeat of the same sort of feeling that we had over here with the five of wands in the reverse five of wands in the reverse is all about um it, in this sense, going with the flow, but that's that feeling that you can. It actually takes a lot of trust to be able to let go and go with the flow. You have to be able to trust that things are headed in the right direction. Um, and this is, there's some sort of like um, something that has been very difficult for the two of you to reconcile. You're coming into a period of time here where it becomes a lot easier to reconcile, a lot easier to see to the other side of. Um, seems very positive, but also a little bit on the vulnerable sides. If you're concerned about feeling vulnerable in the situation, this could be a place that bothers you. So it could be something where um, you might feel even a little bit more vulnerable. And we know that your person tends to have a problem with that. But we've got the Justice card again. So we've got the Justice card having come out of both decks. What I am seeing here is that it is officially more important to make peace and to find this balance than anything else as far as what is going on here. And so it's like everything else just kind of has to get out of the way so that peace can happen so that balance can happen there's something that has to shift right now um, finding peace finding balance somebody's going to court there's definitely or has has uh, there are some somebody has gone to court so that's not going to be true in every situation I know um, I'm not hearing about it from all of you that's that's not something that's coming in the in the notes um, I will acknowledge it's come from a couple of you but there are thousands of people who will sometimes pick up and write a note so um, I am not really zooming in on specific relationships I'm very much just looking at kind of the energy of the collective because that's the goal that's the goal when I meditated on this one I realized I didn't want to separate you into um, like groups this time this was an everybody question what's happening with the energy Ooh, just dropped some cards dropped some more let's see what all ended up face up okay we've got a couple that ended up face up and a couple that fell face down let's go ahead and take a look and i'll start to do some interpretation all of them fell in the reverse we have the eight of cups so this is the quest the two of you have a quest to go on and there's something that's gotten in the way of it and it's honestly it feels like it could just be the energy of the holidays um you know and there's a lot of bouncing back and a lot of feeling like well that's ancient history now and things like that but some things kind of still haven't quite gotten up and running the way that they're supposed to just be aware of that um, there may be a need to play a little bit of catch up but there is definitely something that is not getting the attention that it needs something is not getting the attention that it needs and it's going to impact both of your energies um it's going to impact it's like it could impact you at work so it could even be something you need to catch up with at work you've got the seven of cups in the reverse um seven of cups in the reverse nine of swords in the reverse so this is a feeling that comes together feeling a lot like vulnerability because it's got this feeling of kind of I, of someone being able to say, I don't know what to do about this situation and I'm willing to admit that. So that's kind of a, an unexpected sort of bonus or an unexpected benefit that comes from a conversation. Could be a conversation you have with this person because remember at the beginning of the month we did a reading and I had separated you into those who were in contact versus no contact. But if you take away the time element of it, it really was a very similar message. Um, there's a conversation that was going to be really important and great potential for misunderstanding, um, but not necessarily 
like you have opportunities even during that conversation to try and make things better. With the Prince of Swords here, um, there's a sense of hiding behind it. So remember in yesterday's reading, we got a lot of a feeling of like, it was a feeling of spying, a feeling of watching from behind something. I get it a lot from this again. It came from that Prince of Swords sort of energy last time. Um, it's, it's a, it's very much in the, it's in the energy. It's very much in the energy rather than be super vulnerable because there's a vulnerability here. There's a drive toward that one. If you might have a tendency to do that and toss the other one into this, it's more like you being vulnerable and tossing them into a place of, um, not being willing to touch, but wanting to continue to look. You've got the Empress in the reverse here. It's that feeling of not being ready, but just like often comes out with that Empress card for the folks in this collective it's a feeling of not being ready but not necessarily being right about that like there there's more readiness than they might be willing to acknowledge or if it's you that feels like you're not ready um, I feel like it's more likely to be them but because this is very much a shared pool of energy that is coming in here and so we see them um, being pulled into the vulnerable space recognizing the something's not caught up but not spending very much time on it a little bit of compartmentalization of that and a tendency to want to spy rather than communicate that's kind of a little bit of kind of what I'm seeing with this knight of cups over here as well there's a tendency to want to be like the comfort zone is to stay farther away but there's there's still this this pull to come closer, a pull to come closer and be communicative and in particular to let to kind of, you know, let the let some things come out that haven't had an opportunity to come out with the Prince of Wands energy. This is um, coming right at you sort of energy. It is the energy of something that's coming right at you that if you see this in the reverse, this is really that in and out sort of energy. But with this, it feels much more consistently coming your direction. And I feel like that is uh, also characteristic of this of this time, um, of this energy that you guys are in right now. There's a feeling of still being very much in the thick of it. So not having learned all the lessons, we know that if you do hear from this person, which in this energy, with the coming at you sort of energy, you could hear from them, even though they don't necessarily feel ready. Remember, here's a person who may not know what to do with you once they get to you. Um, if you do hear from them, you recognize you are hearing from an unhealed version of them. But it is also an unhealed version of you that's doing, that's receiving that message. So this six here, this six of um, pentacles in the reverse just speaks to the fact that you guys are still very much going through the healing, still very much working through some elements of that. So there's a, there's a lot of balance that won't have been struck just yet. Balance that we won't have just yet. Here with the moon in the reverse, there's also um, a little bit like there's an overwhelming amount of information coming out, but I feel like it's emotional energy. So ever since about the moment that I started talking about the vulnerability and then through the Prince of Swords after that talking about, but I'm still hanging out, hiding behind this rock, observing you, and yet I want to communicate. It's like maybe even showing some degree of vulnerability in a communication, but then not um, being willing to show very much of it. And I'm like, what is this? What is this person really feeling? So I think that's what we're going to get into when we get into the extended. What is this person really feeling? And maybe we'll even separate out what are they feeling in general from what are they feeling about you and this relationship more specifically. Um, but that's what we're going to get into when we go to the extended. So if you're interested in doing that, the link will be down below. Um, for now, though, I think the first thing we look into is about you. What do you do about this? So one, several of you were musing in your notes, not necessarily specifically asking the question, but just 
what do I even do about this? Like, I constantly can feel this. I don't understand what's happening with it. And now you see it's a constant back and forth happening inside of them, feeling a little bit behind things, feeling a little bit like there's this vulnerability air coming right for you. Oh, but I'm not ready. I'm going to hide behind a rock. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of things that are going, and, and it's just very much back and forth. So I think there's a lot of cons inconsistency for them, and that bouncing off of this energy that is a lot more of a tried and true sort of energy that you guys are coming into. Um, not so much maybe that you wouldn't have been able to feel them before, but there's a little bit more discord in that energy, and I think maybe that's why I'm getting some of the notes that I'm getting now. So let's get into what you can be doing about it and where you need to be focusing. In every reading, we need to do that because you guys are so very involved in your own healing. You are constantly looking for things that are going to make you better. This isn't just a matter of talking about the situation. It's also a matter of understanding what to do going forward. So you've got the sun. Um, the sun is about following your happiness. In this context, it's saying there's an opportunity in front of you that will enable this. Um, we have the Hierophant. There's that bad advice coming back. Somebody somewhere is going to give you an opportunity that is not the right one. This is that advice that you do not follow. This is something that... Um, it's the opportunity that you choose not to take. So we knew that this was out there. We knew that there was a chance for an opportunity that you were going to not want to take because if for no other reason, it was going to cut out too much of the time that you would ideally have been able to spend on, in something else. Um, so there's something here that if you haven't already seen it is an opportunity you don't want to take. And what I draw Three of Swords. Okay, so you've got reminders from the past coming back in the form of triggers, probably around um, a new soulmate coming in if you guys are to that point. So we've done some readings where we know there's a new soulmate coming in. And um, we also know that that person has the potential to trigger you. You are, it triggers you into memories of some things that you've learned from the past, but not necessarily into having solutions for those. So in some cases you will. This is part of where, you know, I keep talking about how you're going to understand a little bit more after all this kind of what level of healing you've done and what where you still need to work on some things. This is where you learn that. This is the situation where you learn that. But uh, overall, I would say it does look like it's a lot more enjoyable than what you've been going through with this person, even though this Three of Swords here speaks of a little bit of a hard edge to it. Um, let's see. All right. Three of Swords in the reverse. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I was looking for. When I saw this Three of Swords, I was feeling, sometimes when a card comes out, you feel it in the upright, and then you feel a little bit of the elements in the reverse or vice versa. Um, you can kind of feel it both ways. Um, I needed something to bend the balance this direction to tell me, in order to tell me, that this is going to end with you recognizing the lessons that you've learned, um, but not having to fall to the pain of those situations. So it doesn't end up being as painful um, as you worry about when you see that Three of Swords. You're going to learn, or you're going to see something that is relevant to a lesson that you've already learned. And then you get to you get to say, well, okay, but I get some of the lessons from this. I don't have to relive all of this. Um, okay. So you've got something coming up that feels like a social event, but it might just be... Um, it, it doesn't even, I don't know that it would qualify as a social event. This could be you pick up a new hobby and this is a class from that hobby or a gathering from that hobby, or it could be a social event. It could be something that happens with regard to work. There's some sort of change that you recognize not making. Like what it reminds me of is you get, and we've heard this one here recently, you get to a situation where you have a conversation and you, after you walk away, you have the perfect response. Okay. Okay. It's that. It's that. It's realizing that you have the perfect response and failing to make that response at the time because, of course, you didn't have that perfect response until after you had walked away. And so then you come you, later on, you're like, well, darn it, I missed out. Um, but it's like it still has an impact because the change that coming up with that response has for you, there's some click that happens. 
um, when you come up with that response. And that's just an example of how this energy plays out. But it's some sort of change that isn't that it doesn't happen or that you're fighting against it, just that it doesn't happen on the, the original like what you would think of as the original um, timeline. So instead of coming up with the response during the conversation, it's the one you'd come up with later. Um, there's something in there that clicks and you say, no, wait a minute, that really is true. I really am not happy or whatever it is um, that kind of shows up in that, in that conversation. There's going to be something that is very telling and you are going to realize something as a, as a result of it that makes a shift on this piece right here. So we talked about something that's kind of behind target or behind schedule or taking a little bit longer or hasn't gotten up and running since the, um, the beginning of the new year or something like that. You know, this is the thing that kicks that kickstarts you. So look for something to kickstart you. Um, Ace of Swords, you're going to be honest with yourself, honest and true, and it's not going to be difficult for you to be honest and true. Judgment, you're going to be able to make judgment of a situation and you're going to be in a situation where you're going to be asked to do that. So you will come face to face with a decision about yourself. So we know that there are some decisions that are coming. This is a, this is more of a um, a whole big picture situation. So it, it's not necessarily that you would just look at this from a logic standpoint it, or from an emotion standpoint. It is a situation that you would look at from both perspectives and you're going to have to in order to um, take a look at this from, from a judgment perspective. But I feel like you're going to be able to do that. You'll be able to do that with your eyes wide open and you will be able to do that while feeling decent about any decisions that you make. And you will be kind of forced to face those decisions, but I don't worry about this. Um, I do think it's an area, a good area of focus for you just to realize that you've got some kind of intense things coming your way. But I don't think there's anything here that you're not prepared to handle. Yeah, you too are. Okay, so we have the sacred clown here in the reverse and it's the same energy as the fool in the reverse. It isn't that I don't take a try or I don't try something. It's that I don't... Um, jump headlong into something without at least considering the options or what that's going to mean. So it's about thinking about the implications of your actions, really. Um, this is just, this is you turning another corner. What's impressive about it is how, I guess, quickly you pull in the information and turn the corner. So you've got great opportunities coming, but they look like fun. So I feel like you jump right into them. The thing is also keep in mind, you've got at least one thing that you choose not to do and it's the right decision. Um, but you know, it's, this is part of that look before you leap sort of energy that doesn't have you just jumping into everything. Um, but this energy with your person kind of bubbling up, I mean, that was that was kind of where the original questions are. So we see the energy that's kind of underlying the overall situation. Then we see what's happening with you and where your focus needs to be right now, which is very much on things, opportunities that are coming your direction and how you manage those, how you handle those. But with this person, they've got, um, they may be coming in and they're going to be impacting your energy. They may be coming in and impacting your day from a uh, physical third, um, you know, very much physical world sort of situation where they could be coming in and communicating to you if you're not currently in communication. Um, but there's still, there's something missing from both of your searches. You haven't gotten something back online yet. There's this coming at you energy that may or may not be like, it's not, um, they don't feel like they're ready, but they might be coming anyway. And it would be an unhealed, unbalanced sort of, move in your direction. So um, like I was saying, let's get a sense for what this person is feeling, get a little bit of what their emotions are. And then, you know, of course, what their emotions are toward you and the situation. So that's what we're going to be doing in the extended. If you want to go over to the extended with me, and um, we'll also maybe take a look at their actions towards you and what what it seems like is going to happen there when we get into the extended. Um, I look forward to seeing you there. If not, then I look forward to seeing you again in tomorrow's reading.